Hey people on YouTube land, Zach Hall back here with another Bible review slash bookstore review. So I went down to my local Christian bookstore, treated it in a Bible, so I had some extra in-store credit. And so I just want to kind of show you guys some of the things I got. And I got a gift for a brother in the Lord. I always like to, I do like to give people things, give people Bibles. Um, you know, as the Bible says, it's blessed more to give than it is to receive. So uh, what we have here is in a holy Bible. King James Version. It is the Open Bible by Nelson. And Brother Eric, you know who you are, Eric1111. This Bible's coming to you, brother. And I uh, just want to thank you for what a blessing you've been in my life and, and your family and just being a friend on YouTube and another fellow Bible geek. Uh, so this is coming out to you. And I just want to kind of do a quick review of it uh, for you guys just to see what, you can look, what it looks like. Uh, there was a lady's name on this, Eric, so I had them put this over it and put your name on it. Um, other than that, sh this person never marked on it, never put a single pin mark in it, and I'll kind of show you that as we look through the Bible. But this open Bible, brother, is leather lined, so you can see right here, genuine cowhide leather, leather lined. You can see the tooling in the corners, and this is leather on the inside here, and it's my sewn as well. So we can take a look at that, if I can get a spot where we can see the stitching. But here you go. You can see, brother, this has stitching and it has overcast stitching. So it's kind of a double double blessing there. But uh, for those that don't know about the Open Bible, join the club. <laughs> I'm pretty Bible ignorant as far as the Open Bible goes. Um, it's uh, pretty much like a what I understand, kind of almost like the Master Study Bible. If you have that, it has a wealth of information the front has a biblical index here to different topics and things and uh, so that's pretty cool and then each book has a outline so you have an old testament there open bible and then uh you have introduction to the old testament kind of goes through that and then each book has a book introduction and a short outline and there's a look at the font for you guys so it's pretty cool. Actually, looking through this is actually a pretty neat uh, Bible. I've never owned an open Bible, and I wasn't buying this one for me, but it was pretty cool to look through it. You can see how it divides. The font's really clear and good. And uh, just to let you know this, brother, this one is from 1975, I think, is what it says. So it's an older edition. Which I guess is good because I guess it means the paper is good. But you see there's a copyright 1975. Uh, but you can see the only mark really on it was at the title page. There's, I think that's pencil actually. So if you wanted to erase that you can. Other than that there's nothing on the presentation page. Nothing on blank pages. Uh, even in the notes section in the back here. This person did not write in it. Which is kind of sad. You know you always feel like that's a sad thing. Because then maybe they didn't use it at all but um but then it's a blessing for others and so erica has hope this bible blesses you brother i'm gonna try to send it out today we'll see what happens but uh so you can see here in the study notes there are no markings from the previous owner and so guys you have a concordance in the back uh as, as most bibles do and then it has some different uh helps here in the back so, this is pretty cool. It's got a section about the Dead Sea Scrolls, a bunch of different articles about different things. Uh, so, you know, like I said, I'm not well versed in the Open Bible. And Eric, you could probably do a more in depth review of this um, once you get it. But uh, it is red letter. I'll take a look at that, brother. The, the red letter is actually pretty good. Pretty good in this Bible. It, it's red, uh, it's not, it, it's pretty consistent. Actually, and that's probably because it's an older printing. And um, you can see there it really pops off the page. It's not not pink, so that's good. It is actually red. And uh, it's pretty consistent from what I've been able to look through it so far. You might see more once you get it. Because like I said, I just saw this in the bookstore, brother. I just thought about you, and I was like, oh, man, I know you love the Open Bible. And I know that you love uh, good bindings. And this one's sewn, and it's leather lined. It's good leather. So you guys can see there, um, here's another spot of the font if you want to take a look at that. 
But uh, for everyone else, if you guys want an open Bible, you can probably find one at a used bookstore, used Christian bookstore if you have one. We're blessed to have one here in Springfield, Missouri, uh, CPO Redeemed, and uh, they're a really good used bookstore. They get Bibles like this all the time. There's actually a couple more open Bibles in there, and even a leather-lined Thompson chain from the 1960s, uh, but I didn't get that one, All right, because I know, Eric, I know you like the open Bible. So uh, here's another example where it has a book introduction, and then it's going to have a pretty detailed outline here, actually of the book of Ezekiel, and uh, that's pretty cool. And what I like about it is it, it relegates all the notes and everything to the beginning of the book, and personally, I like that in the study Bible. I, I'm one that where I don't, and it's personal preference, of course, I don't like their stuff to be in the text. I don't like there to be maps and charts and listings in the text. I'd rather you have it either at the beginning of the Bible at the end of the Bible, or if you're going to do it in between the, the books, have it at the beginning of the book, and, and then just let the text be the text. But that's, you know, that's a personal preference. But that's something I do like about this Bible. But what I was going to say is, supposedly Thomas Nelson is supposed to be coming back out with this Bible. So if this is something that might intrigue you guys, keep your eye out for that. And they're probably re-releasing it with their new comfort print font, if they do release it. So... And that's probably something Eric could give you guys more information on, too. But this is a really well-made Bible, and it's already worn in. I mean, you can see, get it up here. I mean, it's pretty floppy. You got a floppy Bible there. Nice and good. It has two uh, burgundy ribbons. Again, you'll probably replace those. Uh, but they're, they're in decent shape for how old the Bible is. I mean, let's see here. It's 25... 35, almost, what, 43 years old for a Bible, so, you know, it's a pretty good age for a Bible. You can see here in the cover, it's kind of a marbly uh, burgundy color. It's pretty neat. It's got different colors throughout. Uh, I kind of like the color, uh, the cover a lot. It looks really neat. Uh, I hope you don't mind that, brother. I hope that's not like a, you know, thing you don't prefer. I just didn't want there to be another person's name on there, and they're like, hey, we can do this. If you want to go ahead and put someone's name over the top of that, I was like, absolutely, because there's no other markings in this. I've, I've combed it pretty good. I've gone through most of the books here, the back, the front, and uh, it doesn't seem that there's any markings. So this will truly be like, you know, a clean, open Bible for you. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. The only thing, problem I see in the future that you might want to fix is I think this tabbed page here, the glue's coming undone. I can still, I can actually feel the glue right there. So if you, you might want to glue this page a little bit more. But other than that, brother, the binding is superb. It is still in really good shape. It's not falling apart anywhere. Um, it's my stone throughout the whole thing. Again, leather lined and, and flexible and all that fun stuff. So uh, I hope that's a blessing to you. I also got a couple commentaries. As you know, I'm, uh, or maybe you don't know. I don't think I even mentioned this. But I'm studying to become a pastor. It's what the Lord's laid on my heart. Um, so, you know, commentaries are always a good thing for pastors to have, to compare what other people thought, especially commentators like Barnes. I, I love uh, Albert Barnes' commentary. He's a very orthodox believer. I love the depth he goes into, and, it, you know, it's not overbearing. You can definitely read it, even if you don't know Greek or Hebrew. He has some Greek and Hebrew words in there that he goes over, but for the most part, um, if you just want to read the Bible and study it, this is a good commentary series to have. Another good one that people are really familiar with is Matthew Henry. Um, people might not know Barnes as much as Matthew Henry, but I'll tell you what, Albert Barnes has some beautiful things to say about the Word of God. And they're very insightful and they're very helpful when you're studying. And, uh, you know, sometimes you're stuck on a passage and you're like, man, what did someone else think about this? And it's good to go to people who you know were solid believers who, who held, you know, that they believed in the Word of God, and they could interpret the Scriptures and give you references and give you the, the meanings of the words, their context, the passage. And so it's always nice to go and look at uh, what other people thought, and uh, it can help you in your study. So I bought his commentary on Hebrews, and then, there's Hebrews, and then, uh, Ephesians through Colossians, as I'm slowly building my theological library. Um, of course, a lot of people probably do this online now, but I prefer physical books. That's that's just me, uh, which is kind of weird, you know. I'm only 21, and you would think that people in my generation 
would just go with technology. However, I'm a, I'm a book guy. I just love the physical book to hold it, to feel it. But you can kind of see here how the commentary works. So he has the chapter at the top. And the, the, actually, he does the year. That might be Usher's uh, the year, the dating system that he uses. I'm not sure. But you can see there's the Bible text and then his commentary. And he literally goes through every phrase in the verse. And that's what I appreciate. He doesn't even gloss over uh, uh, things that would not seem important. Uh, I've, I've been going through his commentary in John. And it'll be like, you know, the verse says, and they went to another city. And he puts in there, they went to another city. You know, so it's like it's good to know that he goes every over every single phrase. Um, and like I said, a lot of helpful things in there. But uh, yeah, so this is what I went to and got uh, had some money in my account there. And so went and bought these things. And I hope this video is a blessing to you. And uh, um, Eric, I hope to have that Bible out soon. And hopefully we'll get to you soon because I look forward to seeing your review on it as well. Other than that, guys, you have a great day and God bless.